Everyone, welcome. This is our informal, just a, uh, a session that we like to do every once in a while, uh, especially since we're developing, you know, with uh, Thinkorswim having a seasonality uh, tool feature there, and just to go through what uh, some seasonalities are, because this, uh, you know, I've been out to visit a lot of people, and not, not too much traveling. We were just out in Las Vegas. I don't know if we have any of the folks that were there in uh, Vegas uh, last week, but um, it seemed uh, that uh, we were in, um, I don't know, earlier this year, we've been in New York, uh, San Diego, Scottsdale, um, and, and so I've had a pleasure meeting a lot of uh, good folks that are trying to, uh, you know, just, just do the right thing and, and try to make sense out of the market and make some money, and uh, one of the things that I have to say is that it has been a, a uh, an interesting market in the sense that a lot of people uh, have been, this market has been not like last year where you could just buy a stock in a strong sector. It's been a very select stock picking market. Today in our trading room, we actually were talking about a couple things like Amazon uh, up over 6% where it had so many downgrades and so much negativity. I'd ask people and they were going through and, and, and uh, checking out, uh, you know, uh, what what the uh, the consensus was. and. You know, so many people are bearish on Amazon, and all out of the box here it comes. Um, funny thing is, there there is some seasonality to the markets, and we've had a, a string of updates here. A lot of people want to know if this uh, market's for real. Uh, can the market continue to high go higher without any type of correction uh, of any degree? And I think that there are some excellent tools that may help you uncover to become your own analyst and make better decisions. Um, I'm not going to pull anyone tonight because it's being recorded and sometimes the polling device thing can uh, uh, create uh, some some intermittent issues. And I want this to be as smooth as possible and I've got a lot of great information to share with everybody. So with, with that said, we're going to just get right into it. Um, so we are recording this information so that you can review and replay. I will ask this quick question. How many people uh, were in attendance on the presentation I did with Don Kaufman a couple weeks ago. We were talking about the cues and the strength of the market and looking at a couple stocks there. How many people saw that? Yeah, so I don't know if it was kind of helpful there. The um, uh, George Volley, hello there, my friend. Gentle John, good to see you, my friend. Um, all right, so the, the moral of the story is I think that, you know, there's an old adage, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I think it's just a matter of uh, one of the things that I was going to share is in tonight's presentation, seasonality, uh, how to use the tool, and what's what are the best uh, uh, corresponding tubes. You can uh, actually watch that YouTube replay. So it, the recordings are kind of good. Um, in the meantime, I must say uh, for a disclaimer uh, that... Um, Trading is risky, and this information is educational in nature. So now that we got that out of the way, I just wanted to go through and just say, in my in my travels, I would say these are some challenges a lot of traders face most: is finding opportunities. They have a hard time finding opportunity. Um, a lot of people are hesitating to pull the trigger, which I think is, uh, you know, not not. Uh, having a lot of confidence in what you're doing, you're afraid, you, you know, you pull the trigger, you're in the trade, you're going to, you know, you, you have the realization that you could lose your money. And I think that that is, that comes from maybe having a string of, of, of maybe a, a bad run in the market. And remember, all traders go through that. You've got to understand that there will be drawdowns for any trader. And I think a lot, another challenge that traders face is exit strategy. Where, where are you getting out of the trade, right? And, and if you get out too early, you could have left a lot of money on the table. If you, if you don't get out at all, the market can turn around on a dime. I think most traders also are suffering from good price directional forecasting techniques because you see a lot of people learning and wanting to learn and having the need to learn how to adjust option strategies. So if they had better directional strategies uh, or better risk matrix on a strategy, I, I think you'll be doing a lot less adjusting, and and that uh, is not from my own uh, experience. This is from what people are telling me that they're going through. So with that said, I just wanted to share this kind of uh, chart with you before we get into uh, Thinkorswim, which uh, the TOS platform is up. We're ready to rock and roll. It's right here. But um, what I wanted to share with you is that you know 
the S&P consists of many sectors, and um, for XLB is materials, XLE is energy, XLF is financials, I is industrials, K technology, P consumer staples, U is utilities, D healthcare, Y consumer discretionary, also XRT, and there's a few others like transportation, we can add the IYT. Um, in each individual sector, certain sectors uh, have different times of the years where they are there's increased demand and that causes at times on average a price for a certain sector the group of stocks in a sector that are heavily weighted to that sector to go up or not to go up um, it's interesting that when we note that as we come some years we see the actual peak that comes in late April that a market can go down now the interesting aspect is then from late April into on or about mid-June overall S&P's uh, can uh, peak out and then you see the overall trend go down into October thus probably the phrase sell in May and go away until October but there are some trading opportunities it doesn't always conform to this trend last year the market did not conform to this overall trend of the market but what what can develop in this overall trend is that there are several sectors that run out of steam so to speak corrections come in two forms sideways or down which we just kind of saw that pause in the market here now we were anticipating to see the the cues and if you go back and review the, the the tapes we talked about one of my calls several weeks ago was that I thought we would see a move of at least three percent in the queues to get them up over the 90 90 and a half 91 area which the queues have you know obviously we've been there done that it's already happened um, a lot of people struggled with um, identifying whether or not the technology sector which is heavily weighted with biotech and you've got to understand what is in a sector so before we begin and in, in, in delve into how do you use toss I think what it, it's also important to understand is when you're using seasonality it's not just a sector you have gotta kinda take a look at several stocks within that sector to see if they have the same or a similar pattern I'm gonna show you that technique tonight alright so finding opportunities you can find opportunities by using seasonal analysis when applicable so number one you gotta use seasonal analysis on markets that have a history so how long has Facebook been around, for example? How long has Tesla been around, for example? You can't really run a 10-year back test to find out if there's a lot of seasonality on those two names because they haven't been around that long. And certainly, um, certain situations or events can mute or alter a seasonal trend. For example, an earnings, a congressional vote a presidential election a rule change those are monumental events a catastrophic weather event a catastrophic event that like a, a an oil spill in the gulf some things like that can alter and that we need to be um, not as strict and with what the seasonal trend is going to do because certain things can alter also biotech and pharmaceuticals can vary I don't know what's the company that's going to be bought out by another pharmaceutical company or who's the one that just discovered the latest drug that just got approved by FDA I don't have that information so um, by an individual stock uh, it, it's hard to say can you find in in that situation um, seasonals to work each and every year and the answer is absolutely no by all stretch of the imaginations I want everyone to understand technical supersede seasonals I'll repeat that it's very important technicals supersede seasonals in other words you rely on technical analysis before you rely on the seasonals and some confirming indicators that I like to teach people is using support and resistance levels old price points of interest and of course my favorite tool person's pivots and also I like to use specific technical tools breadth analysis for stock indexes um, one that I use is the advanced decline comparative ratio lines for all individual stock indices and also we like to use the contrary indicators or at least confirming indicators like a commitment of trader data 
Now, Thinkorswim does not yet have the COT data. So don't be running out and emailing JJ and, and the guy saying, when are you going to get this? I just heard from John Person. Oh, this is something that's going to, it's, it's, it's been a while, but there, there's a way to get that information, and I'll show you tonight. I'm not going through uh, tonight's session talking about commitment to traders data, but I will not leave you hanging saying, you know, how do you find it? Um, but there is a way to get the information for free. And uh, it's real simple. You can just go to PersonsPlanet.com. And uh, in fact, I'll uh, no. Without uh, messing things up, we'll just go to PersonsPlanet.com real quick. And uh, I'm going to go right over here. There's PersonsPlanet.com website. Here's tools. Here's commitment to traders report. One click. Click on it. See, it says get report. Click on it. Get report. So we want to take a look at the commitment to traders data. The first thing you want to do is just go down. Um, and if you don't know anything about commitment to traders data, by clicking on those two links um, and then go over where it says commitment to traders data, you can all these little things here. You can read all about the commitment of traders about the commitment of traders data. Anyway, I'll give you the short 48 second lesson real quick. If you know what exchange the commodity in question that you want to look at, let's say it's uh, the E-mini S&Ps. I want to look at futures and options combined. And by the way, this has a very important element in what I'm going to share with you on Thinkorswim tonight. All right, futures and options. More and more traders are using options. I'm sure everyone would agree to that. All right, so. Futures and options combined. I don't want to look at futures only. I want to look at futures and options combined. So if you know that the E-mini S&Ps are traded at the Merck, I want to use the short format of futures and options combined. If you want to look at gold, for example, it's traded at the CEI, the Commodity Exchange Incorporated. Let's go do that right now, short format. Let's take a look at this. The first thing you see is silver. Then you see copper. Interesting aspect. I'll give you a little seasonal tidbit on copper. Towards the middle of June, it generally has a seasonal tendency to move up. Now, there are three categories. Non-commercials are hedge funds or large speculators um, who have over a speculative limit, and that is why of positions. We have commercials, and then we have the speculators, the retail public, the ones that, and, and many of you, if you form a, a, opened up a commodity account, you were asked if you're trading your money or if you're using this account to hedge. If you answered you're using this uh, account to hedge, you would be considered a commercial. That's how they know what category of a trader you are. So there's an open interest figure, as you can read this. Open interest. There's 153,000 contracts open. The funny thing is, look at the long and look at the net short. Now, what did I just say? Copper has a seasonal tendency, and you want to write this down because we'll go over this together tonight on Thinkorswim. I said towards the middle of June, the likelihood of copper is to go which way did I say, up or down? I already know the answer. It's up, but I was just saying if you guys were paying attention. So if the market's getting ready to go up, Here's a funny thing. If the general public is wrong, let's say 80% of the time, if the market's getting ready to go up, you want to see if they're really net long or net short. And as you can see here, it says they have 13,729 net long positions and they have 21,642 short positions. That means they are overall net short, aren't they? They're net short. Just last week alone, they added 3,000 short positions. And look at this, percent of open interest, they're 14% of the overall open interest. 14% is held, the short open interest is held by the speculators who 80% of the time lose in the market. Now, look at the, the hedge funds. They're long about 52, they're short 56, but they're, if you can tell right here, all right, they're only, if you take 56, subtract from 52, they're only short about 4,000, whereas these guys are short about 8,000 contracts. Hedge funds can move a little bit quicker sometimes than the small speculator, and lo and behold, the commercials, 
their net long, and they're starting to build a net long position. Interesting. Anyway, here's gold. Uh, the small speculators, you can take a look at the hedge funds were uh, fairly long, fairly long. Look at this, long 172 versus uh, uh, 79 short. So the, the, the hedge funds were already long gold coming into this week. Anyway, that's how you can look to see if I'm if I'm looking for a seasonal turn. There's another interesting uh, market here, and we had this happen today. Something that we were preparing for. Um, let's go over to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Many of you may have heard. I think everyone on the planet because uh, has heard this over the last two weeks. What is what has we been uh, at least the week and a half? Everyone's been making a big deal about the European Central Bank's. Uh, adjustment for today's. I mean, it, it was all over the news, and everyone's been talking about the euro currency, right? And, and if we scroll down, this data was from Friday, last Friday, right? Was is when this information comes out. I'm going to scroll down, and and we're going to get to currencies. Here's the Canadian dollar. Here's the Swiss franc. Here's the Mexican peso. Here's the British pound. Here's the yen, and there's the euro. Look at this. Small speculators short 72,000. They actually added more shorts. What happened to the euro currency today? So this, this information, if you're looking for a seasonal turn, the reason I bring this to your information is because there are other indicators out there that you can use to help confirm if there is fuel, so to speak, to, to make a market have that ab abrupt move. So if we're looking for a seasonal turn, I want to know if the cards or the, the deck of cards is stacked that you could see a turn in the market. Typically, we do see a turn in the euro currency to the upside. We were actually uh, at a quarterly pivot. Many of you know we were already adjusting for an, an FXE position uh, uh, in a, with implied volatility, which was very low, with just a vertical call spread. and this is stuff that we were, were doing and talking about and how we utilize this information. So like I say, if you're going to use seasonal analysis, you don't, for stock traders, well, you could look at the overall indices. If you're trading natural gas, if you're trading crude oil, if you're trading gold, if you're trading a lot of these commodity-based markets um, to see if there is a seasonal turn in the market and to see if the market is ripe by the wrong group of people being on the wrong side, then in essence you have a confirming indicator that might help you uncover some good information. And that is a specific technical tool that we can apply to um, the commodity markets. So let's take a look at Thinkorswim real quick and let's take a look at, I'm just going to go over with the Euro real quick. When we take a look at the Euro on a daily chart, and let me get rid of a couple things here. I'm going to edit studies over here, and I'm going to get rid of the, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm just not going to show the daily pivots and hit OK. And I'm not going to show the monthly pivots at all. And we're just going to hit Apply OK. All right, let me get rid of, um, Delete all drawings. There we go. All right. Now, all right, we're, we're in business. We're in business. So this was the euro currency today. Yeah, while we did have a wild move, what do you think the odds that people, the small speculators that are short the market, what do you think the odds are they covered their shorts today? What do you think the odds are? Slim to none, most likely, because a lot of people have a hard time on the exit strategy. Oh, the exit strategy is one that a lot of people struggle with. And I think that this market having a close above past or prior highs is setting the market up for a move, maybe back up to this, this region here um, in the marketplace. Now, that's setting my technical levels, number one. Now I need to find out what is the timing of this. So how do I utilize, someone was asking me earlier, what about gold? Um, and what's the seasonality of gold? I saw someone post that. And, and that's kind of funny, because I think I'm going to help teach you how to utilize um, using this tool yourself. And real simple, uh, Toss put this in. If we change this to a chart mode, right? If you see, you go to style, 
go to chart mode, I've got it on standard. I'm going to change it to seasonality. All right? So all of a sudden, here's in blue, here's the euro currency, and red is the seasonal tendency of the euro. The funny thing is, as you can see, it's not funny, but I mean, it, it's, it's interesting that we're going to, um, well, I'm not going to do that. But as you can see, typically, the market has a tendency to move up, and it has a tendency to move higher going into August, right? So if the small speculators are short the market, and on a closing basis, you can see the seasonal tool is showing us that the market has a tendency to move up in the euro. So this is, this is kind of an important tool that you can say, well, I want to start lining up some trades uh, moving forward. How do I do that? Well, the first thing is that the tool, the first seasonal uh, aspect, element of, of this, it's, 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 not, it's not one of the best seasonal tools, but it does, it does the trick, right? We like to compare a little bit more advanced seasonality. There's, there's a little checklist we have to find out if the short term, let's say the last seven years, conforms to the life or history. So in the case of like the euro currency, we all know it's not been around forever, but if you took a synthetic valuation of the euro by combining the Deutschmark, the French franc, and the Italian lira, you pretty much get a synthetic euro currency value, right? So with that said, the currency started to trade back in 1972 at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the International Monetary Market, the IMM division of the CME Group. Now, we can find data through the CME to go back, and, and, and a lot of software programs do have that data. Um, now, this is in a development stage, and it, it's, like I say, it does the trick. And you can clearly see that at least for um, the, this past year, you could take a look and say, well, has it, you know, apart from this time frame in here, it really didn't adhere to the seasonality, but you can see that from that low to that high, it has a seasonal tendency to go up. And the euro value did go up. And then it kind of chops around. And it did chop around. And then it has a tendency to go up during this time frame. And, and wow, it did go up. And it has a tendency to go down. And well, it did go down. And now it has a tendency to go up. So it has a seasonal tendency to go up and speculators are net short. So it, it does give you a heightened awareness or a way to say, hey, I think this might be uh, important for me uh, moving forward. Now, someone asked me about gold, and I'll, I'll, since they were, you know, uh, nice enough to ask about gold, I thought I'd I'd uh, show you. Now, the uh, seasonal tendency for gold, and this is where I kind of differentiate between other uh, software platforms I use. Is really, it's gold has a tendency to move up cl closer towards the end of the month from a historic standpoint. Thinkorswim does not have historic data of 25 years. It's defaulted, I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe that this tool is defaulted at five or seven years. Uh, I understand that you can change it, but it it's, um, defaults by five or seven years. Needless to say, I think what's important is for anyone to use a seasonal tool on TOS is to first find out is, is the current market environment or the current history of the market is it acting within sync of the seasonality? So right now, what I was just sharing with you before is the current market environment. So the, the, the red is the seasonal trend, and the blue is the price. So seasonally, gold goes up this time of year, and then it peaks out in February, and then it has a tendency to go down. And it has a tendency, and of course, there's some, some up and down moves along the way. But overall, annual high and annual low so far it's, it's, it happened a little bit late, and it could happen a little bit earlier or a little bit later. But gold has a tendency to uh, the best time of the year to buy gold is actually in late July, and usually the GDX, gold miners, is uh, a little bit later. It lags by about three weeks, so it would be in August. All right? So that, that's kind of a, a, a neat way to say, all right, at least now I got... I can go through and find out and write down a shopping list. I'm going to start preparing and watching for signals or triggers um, to see if gold goes up 
during the week of, at least at this point in time, July 1st. And so what I would want to do is by July 1st, if gold is actually down a little bit, or if it's trading near a low, and we're at this point in time, I'm going to look for a trigger to go long. I want to have a shopping list of things that I need to, to look for. And one of the things that I need to look for is some confirming indicators. What about volume analysis? Well, how many people have been struggling with volume histogram bars? Because I ask this question a lot, and you know, I get mostly a lot of traders saying the same thing. Volume histogram is not acting in accordance to the trend that they would expect. In other words, price is going up, and it's on like volume, and they just don't believe the rally, but yet, you know, here it is, price continuing to go up. How many people struggle with, with uh, volume histogram bars? How many people have been struggling with that or have had maybe some uh, issues on, on uh, the volume? Because one of the messages that I think, yes, uh, George is yes, BW Wanger, yes, a lot of people, yes, look at George, he capitalized it. Volume seems waning. Struggle with all market channels. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. Think of it this way. I think volume has been masked due to option increases in options. That's why I said earlier, I said this is important when I do the commitment of traders report. Remember I said the commitment of traders report. I Remember I went back over here and I said, I want you guys to focus in on futures and options. Because if I sold a put and bought a call, I'm not actually in a futures, but I'm long the market in a synthetic long position. And that volume, my friend, is not going to reflect in the underlying commodity market, is it? If I sold a put in Apple and bought a call in Apple, is that transactional volume going to reflect in the, the options volume or the underlying stock volume? It's going to show up in the option volume. It'll be so that my point is that it's going to be masked. So I think a lot of tr traders are being duped in to looking at trend of volume. That's one of the things that we teach. One of the nuances of, of, of the markets that we teach are the right tools. And I think that is probably a lot of people struggling. And it's, it, there is just like using the Commitment of Traders report. It is a tool. There is a nuance about using that tool correctly. And that's what I'm just, in tonight's presentation, we're talking about seasonality with TOSS. And as I just showed how easy it is to look at it, I think the key is what are the best confirming indicators that we could use. And if volume analysis, if, if seasonal analysis can help you, number one, do, it's gonna, seasonal analysis is going to do two things for you. Okay. The first thing it's going to tell you, it's going to alert you to a potential low that's coming into the market, which would be what? A good buying opportunity or at least a time to stop getting short, A. B, it will also tell you the duration of it, the strongest trend of the year. So if the strongest trend of the year is from, say, July to end of September, I can get into an option strategy. I know the duration or expiration of that strategy, right? So first off, seasonality does a couple things. It helps us to uncover a potential turn in the market. It also helps to uncover the best time to be in, the best time to be out on average. Again, not every year is going to work the same. But armed with that information, now I can say, well, if gold, at the very least, if there's, I need other information. Is the general public short? Because if they are and this thing pops, man, you could see a powerful short covering rally. So that means I, I don't have to get into, uh, I could be a more directional option strategy, right? So I could do like maybe a ratio back spread. How, 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 that's like a very leveraged uh, strategy. You sell a close to the money call, you collect that premium. And you need to be more than 60 days out, generally 45 to 60 days out um, when you do a ratio backspread. Sell close to the money call and um, use whatever that delta is of that close to the money call. Generally, it's, it, it's in, in, in a uh, 50 to 60 range. Um, and then what do you do? You use uh, that money to buy two uh, 
out of the money options that have like if you're using a 60 delta that you're selling then you buy two 30 deltas right so you're in a ratio uh, back spread and if the market pops to the upside it's the options that are out of the money the deltas pop and that's you, you it's a, a very strong directional option strategy of course you could also do a a stock type replacement where you're just buying an in the money call but you know what your your time horizon is and that's where I think a lot of traders can really benefit because they'd uh, they'd understand well instead of just doing a credit put spread maybe I could you know and I'm I'm bullish neutral if I'm more directional in nature um, and if you have a better bias of understanding that directional play that's where seasonal analysis can help you but that's also where understanding the tools behind seasonal analysis that can help confirm whether or not the market's got legs or not as I like to call it does this market have legs and so volume since volume analysis is masked I think we um, there is an, a, a, a tool that I've been using and I teach uh, and the nuances and it's uh, of course on balance um, volume and so with that said um, when we look at like support and resistance, are we near support levels? Are we near person's pivots? In fact, uh, one of the tools that we look at, it's not programmed yet on TOS, but uh, one of the tools that we look at is a quarterly pivot point. You guys know I've been using those for a long time. And uh, if, you, if you just ran and did a quarterly pivot point, so watch this real quick. How often do you have to do uh, a quarterly pivot? How often do you do a quarterly pivot? Once a quarter, right? So watch this. Let's go over here to a pivot calculator real quick. Let's go over to Thinkorswim real quick. And I'm going to go back over here to style. I'm going to go to chart mode. I'm going to go back, put it right back to standard. And I'm going to put this, and let's go to a monthly chart real quick. So so right now the quarter and let's go over and watch forward slash 6e so let's do this for a second you guys help me out all right if you could so we are in the second quarter so let's take the first quarter the first quarter started in January right so help me out what was the low from January February the end of March what was so that's the first quarter what was the first quarter first quarter low was let's see the low here is 134.79 134.76 so let's just put in uh, low equals 134.76 is that correct 134.76 and the high for the quarter last quarter was 139.66 right and the close the close for the quarter at the end of March, the market closed at 137.68. All right. So we go over here. Let's go to this pivot calculator. And we're just going to punch this in because we don't have quarterly pivots programmed on TOS yet, but here's how you can do it yourself. 134.76, tab it down, market low. 139.66, tab it down, 137.68. Is that that's accurate, correct? Good. All right. Hit submit. All right. So we look at our support targets. And we look at our pivot. Oops, I did that backwards. Can you believe I did this? Let's try that one more time. One the the high, the high is 139.66 and the low 134.76, uh, 137.68. Now I hit submit. Okay, there we go. So S1, S1 for this quarter is 135.07. Um, now that's pretty bizarre, but today's low was 135.02. So we hit a quarterly pivot support today, which was pretty cool. 
So there are certain tools. I don't know if you like what you're seeing here, but if I can say, okay, from a seasonal perspective, the market goes up, and I know that within a you know an area, I don't know if this is going to cause the market. Today was kind of a weird thing because if you take a look at this this downdraft today on a 15-minute basis, I mean it it literally it popped up, it went down 45 minutes, and within an hour, if you just slept in late and woke up, and that's what we said, look at this, the market's already back up here, um, you know, this particular move uh, was, you know, the first sign of some, some decent, today was like exciting because it was the first day of, uh, you know, some decent volatility in the market, um, but needless to say, I think there, if you, if, if you could see what I'm, I'm pointing out to, there are some tools out there that you can arm yourself with, um, the right strategy that if you have the duration timing, I know that the market, at least going into July, so I wouldn't want to do a June option because there might not be enough time for the market to, to move. But I do know that there's support down there near that 135.07. There's monthly support. We've got a lot of technical support in the market. We've got the small specs short this market. Small speculators are short this market. And, and we coming into a seasonally strong period of time. Wow. That is a combination for you know for me at least to say hey I, I you know I think in a low vol in, in environment like we have you know a, a best strategy there and and you know using options on futures might not be your game but you could certainly use um, you could certainly use the FXE or an ETF now that's just that's just looking at um, the euro currency all right we have. You know many other markets that you can utilize, such as um, crude oil. Um, there are other markets like natural gas, which comes into a seasonal tendency. Um, there are a lot of and you know many of you know about my research in in working with Commodity Traders Almanac, where we didn't just use ETFs, but we also looked at stocks that correspond to the underlying commodity. So. You know, with crude oil, if we're in a seasonally strong period of time, what stocks or a seasonally weak period of time, or copper, for example, uh, what what's the first uh, uh, BHP billetin, a copper mine, uh, Freeport Mac brand, FCX, which is gold and a little copper, but there are some some stocks that you can uh, look at and use for confirming information. So I think you got um, uh, a lot of information. Um, and and to, to to look at for those traders that are not familiar with this type, how do you you know all we can do as traders is try to stack the odds in our favor, right? I mean, if everyone's using MACD and stochastics and Bollinger Bands and moving averages and ten day and twenty day, there's got to be something out there that's got to be a little bit different that's used least by the masses, and it might be a little extra work. And it could be a little bit confusing, and it might take a little bit of cerebral thought, but it's teachable. And while I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to be right 100% of the time, but I'll tell you this, it certainly beats, if you've been struggling in the market, there are tools out there that, that I think can do a better job for you. And that's what I think uh, 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 in tonight's presentation, uh, what I wanted to come and, and and at least present to you guys is to say, hey, listen, man, there is some stuff. I mean, looking at biotech, uh, how many people, uh, when we, if I could, um, get back off onto Thinkorswim, what happened here? There we go. Um, how many people remember the biotech, right? So here's the biotech sector, IBB. I'm going to change this to a daily chart. Man, it had a nasty spill here. And and if you look at the biotech, one of our messages earlier was we were actually thinking that because the biotech, and we did a, a webinar back in, in, uh, in mid-February actually, warning people, hey, eventually the biotech has a heavy weight on the NASDAQ, and that could keep the NASDAQ down. Um, and one of the interesting aspects is if you take a look at the NASDAQ 100, in, many people look at that and think it's a technology, and, and you know, in essence, it's got Whole Foods in it. It's got uh, Celgene, Biogen, um, Amgen. I mean, it's got all the good top dogs of, of biotechnology in it. 
So let's just take a look here, shall we? We'll go over here to setting chart mode here, and let's go to seasonality real quick. And um, change this over to a weekly chart, if I could. All right. See, now, this is where the longer term differentiates uh, amongst different platforms, because in the uh, longer term, 25-year history of biotech, one of the things is that you, um, you would see there is a difference of that seasonality. So it is important that some tools, uh, at least if you're using, you're able to capture a, a a longer term seasonality and that's where the advantages would come so with thinkorswim we don't we need to get a little bit more history because it just didn't give enough history that seasonality actually shifts to the left by about a month so the the biotech sector actually weighed on the market um, and as you can see it shows here a little bit different graph but the funny thing is notice that we also move up going into um, as you can see, we start to move up into the seasonality into July, right? And so that's in about three weeks. And after that, we see a little down spill that can last going into August. Actually, my stuff on other platforms show it going into late September. But with the biotech, if that's weighing on the NASDAQ, now this is why it's important to look at um, seasonality and try to get as much history as you can but you can get this information from day in and day out that can that can help you um, and if you turn on the years you can see all the years that it is uh, available so with that said go back over here to style let me go over to chart mode season chart mode seasonality I want to go back over here so let me go over and just uh, share this one element that I wanted to get into tonight as well is to use the seasonality and the confirming tools. Remember, I wanted to really talk about how do you use seasonality and if everyone's having a hard time or if a lot of people or if you're suffering or if you're struggling uh, finding opportunities or at least if you want to improve, if you're looking to improve directional forecasting techniques, um, one of the things that I like to do is is that we talked about tonight is not only the uh, commitment of data but it was also looking at volume analysis and um, when I look at volume analysis you know people look at this this little histogram here and um, they go wow the market is um, starting to move down you can see we got a little PPS sell signal there and then we change this over to a weekly basis. Here we go. Let's change this over to a weekly chart. Yeah, that's great. So as the market starts to rise, look at the on-balance volume. I prefer on-balance volume over other indicators for numerous reasons. It's plain, it's simple, it's clean, um, and to me it's just something I've been using for a long time. So with that said, as you can see, it it is calculating the advancing price or the up days and the volume on up days versus subtracting the down days all right so if the market or weeks or whatever your time period is but as clearly as you can see as price is rising it's rising with an increase in on balance volume indicator and all of a sudden as you get a turn in the market you can clearly see that on balance volume is going down so one could argue that while the trend of the biotech is going down, it's going down as volume is increasing, confirming that trend's weakening. And all of a sudden, as the difference is, is note that as price is starting to rise, and here's the issue, volume histograms are not rising. But what is the direction of the on-balance volume indicator? It's moving up. So and here we go and this might be exactly where one would struggle not only do you get a buy signal a bona fide weekly buy signal in the biotech sector but it also is on an increase or rise in value of the on balance volume showing there is confirmation of accumulation in these this sector so granted it's it hasn't burnt the sky to the upside it has moved higher over the last two weeks whereas the histogram volume does not reflect accumulation. So one of the, the, the tools, and, and I would say, hey, 
Um, for me, when I look at, and I think this is another interesting concept, is when you look at the queues, and now I'm going to change this over to a daily because I just people just asked me about this the other week. Um, people look at this market and they go, you know, there's no way we thought this market was going to go up because the volume, the volume was going down. So you see that volume is going down, but yet the on balance volume was going up. And so I think a lot of people got maybe trapped in here. And all of a sudden, what was happening is the market on balance volume started to make consecutive series. If we were trading price, if this yellow line was price, aren't you making a consecutive series of higher highs and higher lows? Do you see that? So from that low, it made a high, it retraced, it made a high. It was carving out higher highs and higher lows. And it was doing so before price even started to advance. So it was actually giving a accumulation, not distribution. And whereas people using the volume histogram may have been duped out of a trade. Well, granted, these two days here, this day was on heavy volume. It showed a sell-off the very next day. It showed even heavier volume on that little uptick. And a lot of people may have missed that. But the on-balance volume did catch it because you'll note that it was on an increase. So A, there are some nuances on how to teach people to use the on balance volume like any indicator. And again, it's not 100% perfect, but boy, I'll tell you what, if you've been struggling about uh, against volume histogram, and when I said volume histogram, I meant this, this blue in the middle section indicator, all right? If you've been, if you've been struggling I mean, you can take a look. That's the Qs. Let's look at the uh, NASDAQ 100. I mean, it's going to represent almost the same thing um, in, in this time period, right? So the NASDAQ 100, the only, the only thing that I'd have to suggest right now is how many up days has this market uh, gone through, right? And uh, one of the things is that we've seen a, an incredible move in uh, price but it has not been associated with this indicator. So uh, after tomorrow's unemployment data, you know, and we go over here and hit style, and we're going to go over to seasonality. Well, the funny thing is we, um, the seasonality for technology goes up. And, you know, this, this graph here shows that it goes up almost all the time, and we know that's not the case. So with that said, looking at the um, seasonal graph here, if I may, we note that, hey, wait a minute, May, what is this, June 18th? This market has not been conforming to the recent historic seasonal tendency of the market. So there is a disconnect. That's what I get out of this. There's a disconnect. I have a particular situation in volume that it's not supporting this rally mode. And so I would beg to differ that I, or at least be cautionary that I don't know if it's a buy the rumor, sell the fact issue with tomorrow's unemployment report, but I can certainly say that uh, to me, I will be looking at A, the biotech sector, I will be looking at uh, um, B, other names within the technology XLK or excuse me the NASDAQ 100 such as Apple okay now we've done extensive obviously uh, some work on this and um, have done uh, other uh, looking analysis of looking at this market of course that was earnings and as you can see with Apple Apple actually has broken out of its volume. It is confirming, except for, interesting, we just made newer high, and the volume did not confirm that new high. So Apple is actually starting to show signs of weariness. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's what I see, and I'm sure you can see the same thing. I'm seeing newer highs in price, and I'm not looking at aggressive 
or newer high in volume, right, from that point to this point. So we've had a, uh, a price from 635 to 647. The price has moved up over one, two, three, four, five days, and it's not aggressively moving up. And I don't know about this volume histogram, but I would suggest that uh, Apple could be due for a little short-term correction here and probably over the next couple days. Maybe people, you know, no one loved, no one liked Apple when it was trading down here, but everyone's starting to like it now, and they think it's all going to go and pass 700 most likely. Um, you know, if we threw up some of uh, our uh, technical indicators, let's go to add a study, and we'll go to John Persons, Persons Pivots. Let's go there. Oh, wait a minute, I think I turned them off. So note that we have a, a monthly pivot that I don't know if we'll be able to get all the way up there, but you know, Persons Pivots is indicating a bullish trend, and any new high up in here over the next couple weeks or into next week, if it fails, if Apple starts to reverse up in here and pauses, the first test of an old high generally does stall. But if we do get that stall, what do you think that's going to do to the NASDAQ 100? The fact that the overall index isn't breaking out with newer highs on lighter volume, it's breaking out to newer highs on lighter volume. Um, you know, the fact is we are going to be entering a seasonally weak period of time. I can now start to build a case that, hey, perhaps this market is getting closer to the end of the run with testifiable evidence. And then someone would say, well, what's the commitment of traders report show? And so why don't we take a look at that and find out? And we'll do that real quick. So if you're using seasonal analysis on Thinkorswim, there are some tools that you can go to. Just take a real quick gander. Go to Tools, CO2 Report, Git Report, right here. And so I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to go to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange one more time, short format. All right, and I'm going to scroll down until I get the NASDAQ 100. But I'm going to make sure I don't use the big guy because the small speculators don't really trade the big contract overnight. They trade the little guy, right? So we want to look for the E-mini NASDAQ 100, right? The mini. Um, oh, my goodness. The small speculator is actually long the NASDAQ 100, okay? The small speculator is long. The hedge funds are long. And the uh, small speculator has about 13% of the open interest. And the reason I use NASDAQ 100 is because small speculators will more than likely use the NASDAQ 100 than they will the big ones. So just do note there are certain nuances. Um, and, and so I think that's kind of an important number that if we might see some follow-through strength tomorrow, we're coming closer to possibly the end of a a run in the market or a pause. So there are decent confirming tools. A, I like to say, well, are we near a, an important pivot area? B, is there volume behind that move? And uh, C, how, does, how, how can we get around this problem with this volume histogram? And that's what I'd have to say, um, again, how we get that information. Um, and, you know, uh, someone just PM'd me. I, I know that after Friday, Apple goes through a 7-for-1 split. I understand it won't see 700. What it will see 700 or 100, right? It, it will see the 700 notional value on the split, Bob. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. But I think you understand the point. All right? So um, that is... Um, and that, thank you for, for reminding me, just in case someone didn't know. So that was very nice of you, Bob. I appreciate that. But I do know, oh, by the way, Apple, if anyone didn't know, I think you have to know by now, Apple's got that seven-for-one split. I mean, that's one of the things that everyone's been making, you know, such a, a big deal and a big trade about, um, you know. And, and to me, it's like I, I think there's some better trades out there, like uh, 
uh, maybe the top coming in the transportation sector, um, IYT, for example. Um, and so looking at the transportation sector, IYT, if you take a look at this, uh, this market real quick, while we do have a, um, a strong move on strong volume, the funny thing is that actually transportation stocks, we do see an actual turn that comes in the month of June in transportation. So after this huge little run-up, I wouldn't expect a, a market to go straight up and then straight back down, but I do expect to see a little pause, a consolidation, uh, perhaps what we call consolidation choppy range. Maybe it goes up and tests the high, breaks out, and then comes back down. But certainly we are already seeing a, a market that has paused over the last four days. Interesting where the stock market's broken out, the transportation sector hasn't broken out to newer highs. Does, that any, does everyone see that relative performance comparison? Here's what I mean. Spiders, the S&P broke out to newer highs. That's, that's a good definition of broke out to newer highs. Whereas the transportation IYT did not break out, as you can see, to newer highs. We didn't close above newer highs. So it's kind of, it's dragging its feet, so to speak. So um, there are some things that are coming, a sea of change, and there are some confirming. And we're starting to build evidence that, hey, you know, instead of saying, I want to guess that this market can't go any higher, how about, hey, I have some information that's projecting that we could see a possible turn. And that's where Thinkorswim, once again, has uh, uh, tools that uh, traders can use. We just got to teach you how to use some of these tools a little bit better for some of those people that aren't familiar with those. Okay? So with that said, uh, tonight I wanted to make this, hopefully I was able to share with you guys, if no one's ever seen or know exactly how to get it, the chart mode right? Seasonality, number one. In fact, uh, here we have, you can see the seasonality. It, it starts to peak in more years than not in May, but we didn't have that sell in May go away. And as you can see, you know, going into July, transportation or to at least to the end of the month, transportation has a little pause and it has a little rally and then it, it has that little pullback that goes all the way into September. So transportation sector, actually, this is uh, not the greatest time of the year to be buying the transportation sector. It's actually a time to maybe tighten up stops, start looking for shorting opportunities, and, the, and now you know what your duration is, right? So with that said, um, again, uh, I can't use the commitment of traders data on IYT, but what I can do is start looking at some of the names within the IYT. And, and, and so in our trading room, one, one, uh, um, one name that came up to our uh, analysis in the transportation sector is probably um, the boys in brown here. Um, they are playing off a, a major double top. They've had a nice little rally on light volume. This, this, even the on-balance volume has not confirmed this rally, so to speak. And um, if I go over here to studies, edit studies, and I'm using daily pivots, which we need to turn daily pivots off unless you're doing intraday. Here, oops, what what I do? I'm getting late and I'm getting old. Edit studies. Don't show it. Okay, apply, okay. I did it again. Let's try that again. Edit studies. Oh, I got it up twice. That's why. I had it on twice. Didn't see that. So, all right, looking at UPS, I mean, a potential major longer-term double top, and I look, at, uh, I look at this market and I go, you know, let's take a closer look at this one. So here I have a potential double top. Do we take it out? Eh, possibly we take this out. But, uh, you know, this particular week, we're starting to, you know, certainly it's not seeing uh, the strength that one would uh, believe we should see with today's type of market move, right? So, in fact, the on-balance volume is starting to make a uh, even price 
went down and we made a lower low. So this is one that if we see that uh, can be in the next couple days or into next week, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see by mid-June or, or excuse me, mid-July into July expiration, uh, this market back down to what, a minimum 99, 100 or even possibly lower. So UPS, not a, you know, it's taken uh, one, two, three, four, five weeks to go up and in a seasonally weak period of time, what would it do to go down? So we just go through the list of names of stocks that might be uh, succumbed to being a victim of selling off. So that's called top-down approach and how we utilize uh, finding opportunities and using uh, some technical tools to help us uh, uncover whether or not the market has that potential to reverse. So with that said, um, we've, um, I hope tonight at least gave you some interest into understanding what other tools are out there, how to use them. There are some nuances with those we wanted to also introduce you guys, if you're interested in an amazing course that we're doing for this summer, it's going to be a great Father's Day gift. It's two-hour sessions. It's held on Saturdays. We're recording them. Um, obviously, attendees have access to those recordings. We're going to be covering in week one, which starts this Saturday, seasonal and sector analysis, including all my historic data, why, when, and how to effectively use commitment of traders' data, Week two, market internals, my breadth indicators, and volume analysis tools, and which ones that I prefer and why. Week three, the best way to use person's pivots, swing points, and chart patterns. Week four, option analytics, and my three top strategies that I like when I use directional and non-directional tactics. How to execute on triggers, snapbacks, and breakouts. So week five is going to be more devoted toward triggers, entering trades. Week six, one of the most important elements, risk management, stops what I consider or call the last conditional change levels, and most important, position sizing guidelines. So this six-week mentoring course, this is what's the topics, this is what we cover, two hours, it's Saturdays. Um, we go from 9 to 11, and like I say, that's Eastern Standard Time. It is recorded, and you guys will have access to that. Also, we gave you access to our trading room if you want to show up, even if you only want to come in from um, just uh, on Mondays, which what we put together um, are what our stock outlooks. This is just actually an example of a trading sheet from this week. If you're interested, we put out the seasonal commodity spreads. For example, what's happening in uh, the uh, month of June, for example. Uh, Dees cattle, corn, uh, looking at specific natural gas spread, uh, a wheat, corn spread, for example, when you get in and how long do you hold it for, and certain stocks. I mean, for example, this week, uh, Plantronics, Facebook, we were looking for pullbacks we give out uh, specific strategies. Amazon, give you back the pullback date. Google, Google L, that is. Google L, we were talking about looking for a pullback between 545 and 553. IBM, Seagate Technologies, ADP, Caterpillar, and Simon Property Group. So these are some areas, just an example of what we do on every Monday. This was Monday's planning and scanning session. We do daily trading sheets. And of course, every week the price of this is only six eighty nine, and it can be broken into two payments. It will be covered through June into July. It's an awesome Father's Day gift for yourself, for you fathers out there, or for those that are single fathers, you moms out there. Also, as a reminder, any TTU member always receives a fifty percent discount to our uh, products that we are giving out. If you have any interest and you want to uh, take advantage of this right away, you can simply call our office tomorrow morning at 561-655-1881, or you can go to our website at Persons Planet. In fact, if you go over here uh, to Persons Planet, and you go over to seminars. We have the six week event right there and uh, you can simply click on that and 
It gives you the complete description of what we do. You can also see this week's exact uh, strategies and spread and uh, trade information. It's all posted right there on the website, by the way. Uh, incidentally, if you'd also like information on we're going to be in LA. We have a two-day seminar in Los Angeles, June 15th and 16th. Um, and there's the information. And you can find out more information about that. But if you want to take advantage of this, we look forward to having you. I think we could. Uh, get, it will be some really good information. If you like tonight's presentation and you want more on specifics and details and spend some time and improve your education, stretch that out. Great Father's Day gift. We welcome you to be here because I'm telling you, I think it's some of the best information uh, of how to get better trade ideas out there. So. There's still time. Come on out to visit us in LA, or if you simply want to sign up for the six-week mentoring course. Uh, of course, we handle all your questions uh, from A to Z on the subject matter that we cover. And uh, this six weeks absolutely is recorded. Number one. Number two. The uh, recordings are posted and will be available. You will get a password. You can review those. Um, I believe up to one year, so we will have that available for you. Okay, um, I appreciate everyone coming in here, and uh, with that said, I thank everyone for uh, attending, and I hope you got something out of tonight. At least a a little insight as to saying, hey, what's going on with the stock market? We just went over uh, a potential uh, turn coming into maybe next week. Uh, we see the small specs are actually long this market, according to commitment of data, uh, which could have been a surprise because you know many people think the small speculators have been trying to sell this market all the way up, and actually they're long as we saw net long the market. That's kind of a, a scary thing up here with how many days up in a row have we had. So uh, just like the euro currency, they got it right for a little while, but do they get out? Do they have an exit strategy? That's the key. Do traders have that exit strategy? And uh, I think that's what we need to put together. All right. Now, we will be using Thinkorswim in our presentations in the next six weeks. So we will be helping you to utilize Thinkorswim. I will also be using a mixture of other two other platforms, uh, TradeStation as well as Genesis. All right. So it's uh, we're, we try to be... Um, fair to the best platforms uh, out there, the ones that I use and trade with. And so there we have it. Everyone, I thank you very much. Definitely learn about it. And um, I think this will be a turn for you guys it, for the next six weeks. It would be a great course to take. It's a great refresher course. And again, for Trading Trigger University students, a good refresher course may find some new information uh, as well. Everyone, thank you very much and take care. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Just wanted to, to mention that again. Thanks, Dad. Uh, the uh, six-week event, if, uh, I do understand that it's beginning June 7th. If you are interested, please email me at johnp at nationalfutures.com or you can call our office at 561-655-1881. Uh, I know that um, my father's actually put on the website, so you can actually order directly through the Persons Planet site. Each uh, of the six will be recorded for future viewing, uh, as well as, like my father said, we'll be using TOS uh, through a number of the, the examples, as well as a variety of other uh, software applications. So I just wanted to mention that I've been seeing a number of questions coming in, and I want to make sure that we answer those uh, in a timely fashion. Uh, as well as, I, I did want to thank everyone. I look forward to seeing a number of you in, in Los Angeles next week. Uh, we still, you know, for those individuals that are still interested, uh, you know, please feel free to contact us. Uh, we'll be more than happy to get you registered for that. Um, just wanted to, to thank everyone again this evening. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces. It's been a while since I've been on, um, quite a bit. So, you know, I'm glad to be back on the site and, uh, and working with everyone here, um, and, you know, and, and assisting and answering questions. So, but, uh, you know, to me, there's a lot of uh, new faces as well, and probably a number of you that have never uh, spoken with me or heard of me in the past. So, uh, you know, I just want to say welcome, everyone, and uh, 
and uh, look forward to working with everyone.